So I get a lot of these questions on almost every video, like what mic should I buy with this interface, or which mic should I buy, mic X or mic Y? And let's just say I, I really can't help you, as a guy on the internet doesn't have access to the information that would help you make that decision, but I can offer up some advice. Some standard wisdom that you can apply to your unique situation to make your decision a bit easier. So let's start with the first choice. Now, first up, you're going to need to answer this question. And about a year ago, it was a lot more clear cut. Any kind of future proofing that you wanted for your setup would require you to go the route of XLR. USB was fine, but there was really nothing compelling in the market. And the all-in-one solution was mainly aimed at people who couldn't afford the better setup. Now, that has mostly changed as companies like Rode are offering options like this one, the new 5th Gen NT1 that has XLR and USB, and it better fulfills the needs of most end users. So this decision is actually getting a lot tougher, especially as mics like this one hit the market or even the Rode X mics that dropped late last year. There's a lot more variety. So choose wisely. Make your decision based on your specific use case. For example, I just hooked up a podcaster with the new Rode XCM50. Now, he does a lot of interviews and at times can have a bunch of audio coming from separate places, meaning the included software called Unify and the included onboard effects, well, that might just fit him perfectly. But for a musician that's trying to get their feet wet in the industry, well, that might not be the mic for them. So you have to decide what you're going to be recording and figure out the best option for you. Ah, uh, the age old question, one that can befuddle anyone just getting into audio. And to be fair, there's a lot of misinformation out there. So here's the gist. Both condensers and dynamics can work for you. Yes, the dynamic has much less pickup to it, so it can kind of pick up less of your room reverb as you speak into it, but that isn't always true either. Also, dynamics need more gain to get their signal up to something easy to deal with in post, and condensers, on the other hand, need way less gain and are sensitive, so they pick up more. And again, this is true to a point. You see, no matter the mic you use, you're going to need to treat your space at least a little to get decent audio. But before you start screaming at the video about how much you can't afford it, just wait. I pointed out in an old video here that you don't need to go out and spend a bunch of cash to treat your walls. I used to do voiceover in a concrete basement. It is possible. Just a bookshelf behind you, maybe curtains on the windows and a rug in the room will go a long way to treating your space. So with that said, with treatment out of the way, which one do you use? Well, the long and short of it is it doesn't really matter. Dynamics do tend to be a bit flatter and duller and perhaps require a bit of love in post-production, but condensers tend to have more character. So again, this is where you have to do some of your own legwork to decide what your use case is and what type of mic will easily fit that void. Now, this one sounds stupid, but the type of mic you get might be dictated by your setup. Are you a gamer and you need something to be relatively out of the way so your adoring fans can appreciate your aesthetic while maintaining a sick kill-death ratio? Or are you a voiceover artist that needs to see the copy in front of his face? Well, mic size matters, folks. So as you're looking for your first mic, consider the things that you're going to be doing with it. And more importantly, where's the mic going to fit into your setup? This isn't something you want to think about after the fact, because the mic has to be in certain proximity to the sound hole on your face. So consider all the options, including how you're going to get that mic into position like a boom arm and make sure you can accommodate it. Now, once you've picked out the microphone you think you like or a couple and watched all the reviews and comparisons, you need to try it out if you can. Now, this can be tough depending on where you are in the world. I know here in Canada, I can go into a Long & McQuaid and just ask them to let me try it. I have no idea what it's like where you are, though. Put two mics side by side, if you can, and go back and forth between them and listen. Now, depending on how good your ears are, you might not hear a massive difference, so feel free to get opinions of others. Now, if all of this isn't possible, and I know it isn't sometimes, there are still a few things you can do. First, watch everything you can on the microphones you're considering. Hear those mics through a variety of voices and try to make some educated guesses on how it will sound on your voice. Remember though, generally you want to hear the microphone raw, so reviews are the best place for this, as we don't generally add compression and EQ to them. That way you don't end up with an SM7B and wonder why it sounds so flat. And finally, probably the best advice I can give 
is buy a couple from Amazon just to try at home and then just send back what you don't want. Now, I know this isn't the most prudent thing to do and don't tell Amazon I'm telling you to do this, but there's little risk to it as Amazon will take it back if it doesn't fit your needs. Oh, and by the way, that video I told you about earlier for treating your room for free, well, check it out here. Lots of great tips in there.